Hello folks, it's uh, Tim, Golf 5 Tango Mike. Hope you're keeping well. Now, I've had the chance recently to look at a very interesting antenna that uh, uh, a good uh, friend of the channel, Rick, DJ0IP, over in Germany, has published on his website. And if you want to see Rick's website, I'll leave a link in the description below. He's uh, really into his antennas. And he uh, published a really good description of a loop antenna a full wave loop basically on 80 meters that he thinks will work really well as a multi-band antenna. So uh, let's take a look at Rick's design, shall we? As you can see, Rick's antenna is uh, what he calls the 80 meter lazy loop. Now I think he's calling it the lazy loop because basically you can feed it in the corner, as you can see there with 450 ohm ladder line and with minimal effort to get several bands out of it. I think that's why he calls it that anyway. Um, the antenna itself, as you can see, has four 21 meter legs. Uh, so what's that in feet? Ooh, I don't know. Uh, someone will tell me. Probably something like about uh, 70 feet or so. Each uh, each of those four sides. So four 21 meter sides. Now he's got it there at 10 meters above the ground, but we're going to look at it at both 10 and 12 meters above the ground, okay? We feed it in one corner with, well, in this instance, about 50 feet of, uh, 15 meters of 450 ohm ladder line. And I'll tell you why in a minute. We're choosing that length, but uh, any length is fine. Just enough to get it to the tuner in the shack, basically. Nice, good, big, fat, balanced tuner would be good. And, uh, yeah, we'll look at it on both uh, with both heights. Now, uh, the reason why I've got it at 10 and 12 metres above the ground, and the reason why we're looking at uh, 50 feet or 15 metres of 450 ohm ladder line, is that a good friend of mine uh, called Tom is looking to uh, move QTH uh, over the next uh, few weeks, I think. And he's uh, going to a much bigger... A uh, lot bigger garden, so he's able enough to think about putting in one of these antennas, the Lucky Blighter. So uh, he asked me to, have, to look at it in uh, in modelling to see whether it sort of comes out with uh, with Rick's conclusions, because Rick says that basically this antenna should give very good gain at high angles for both forty and eighty meters, so really good for sort of uh, well in our case into G and and short stuff into Europe, and some DX as well, but mainly for that. But on the higher bands, it gives some really good low angle gain, according to Rick. So um, let's have a look on MMANA. We fired it up uh, a few hours ago to have a look at the uh, have a look at the the program and what it told us. And uh, let's see what MMN, MM even ANA told us about the loop. Let's start off at eighty meters then. So um, as I say, we've got blue and red. And these are the far field plots. So blue is the, the antenna at twelve meters above the ground. And uh, just going back to the picture. Just to show you, basically, you can support, or Rick in this case has supported each of the four corners with maybe a 10 metre pole or something, or a tree of that height. Uh, gives you an idea anyway. So going back to 80 metres then, we've got it at 12 metres above the ground, which is 0.15 of a wavelength, or in, with using the red colour there, which represents 10 metres above the ground, just a bit shorter. As I said, I'd spot the difference though, because basically uh, both antennas have excellent gain at high angles, ideal for local contacts on 80 metres. By local, we mean sort of within the UK, a few hundred miles. Very high gain at very high angles. Look, uh, 12 metres is fractionally better on the right-hand side, as you can see. But interestingly, both antennas have gained over 5 dB off the horizon uh, at basically 45 degrees either side. So um, a really good antenna, therefore, for short work on 80. Let's look at 40 then. So uh, with 40 metres, a similar story. Spot the difference again. Both antennas very good for high angles. Uh, 10 meters above the ground is actually slightly better than 12 meters above the ground. You can see they're red, just about beats blue. And that's this is the only band actually where this happens, but it's hardly any difference, look. Uh, both with peak gain at 54 degrees, uh, 5.2 compared to 5.6 dB. Again, very good for the uh, the high angle local stuff into Europe. But Rick says he's worked DX with these sorts of antennas as well. And I dare say you could. Anyway, let's have a look at 20 meters. Now, I've got using the azimuth pattern here for 20 to show some of the lobes. And there's something interesting to show you here. As you can see, uh, blue does beat red here. 12 meters beats uh, 10 meters. Um, now, interestingly, if you look at the four lobes we have there, the one up at northeast is the shorter lobe, and that's the corner where the loop is fed with the 450 ohm ladder line. Now, if you look at the opposite corner pointing down to us, say northwest is the one with the 450 ohm ladder line. The one pointing southeast, directly opposite, actually has the, the greater gain of all the four lobes there, just about. 
and that's the one that will always have the greater gain. So when we feed a square loop in the corner like this, a horizontal loop, uh, say in uh, the, that corner, the opposite corner will see the greater gain. And that's quite interesting in, in all these patterns that we'll see. So going back then to 20 metres, we can see that we've got some really decent gain. 10 metres above the ground, look in the bottom right-hand corner in the dark writing. I'm looking at five degrees off the horizon, by the way, so we're looking at DX here. Um, good angle for DX. We can see the peak gain is at minus 0.8 dB in that bottom right-hand corner of that pattern. 12 metres above the ground, well, it's 0.9 dB. So there's nearly a 2 dB difference between the two. So um, a little bit more gain being 12 metres above the ground because 12 metres above the ground is 0.6 of a wavelength and is slightly higher than uh, 10 metres, of course. Now, let's have a look at 17 and above because this is where we'll start to see some, uh, some really nice gain. So 17 metres then, and again, uh, 17 metre band, I should say, uh, the blue pattern, again, shows that 12 metres above the ground has a uh, better gain, slightly higher gain. Again, we see that peak gain in the opposite corners of the feed point look. Down towards southeast there, we see a, uh, a much bigger gain. Uh, again, at 5 degrees, the 12 metres above the ground is, again, nearly 2 dBs better off. A nice uh, 6.7 dB kick there towards that direction and a decent bit of gain on the opposite direction as well, the corner that's fed. And one or two lobes as well. You can see the pattern breaking up, can't you? So 17 metres is looking decent. Again, if you are able just to, to really choose where you feed the loop, you can really aim your peak gain in the direction you want it to be. So that's really useful. So get to know the topography of your land, where, where things are in relation to where you are, in terms of where America would be, where South America would be, where maybe you're shooting towards the Pacific somewhere, and then feed the antenna in the opposite corner and see where you go with it. Anyway, now, 15 metres is looking really good. Now, with 15 metres, a similar pattern to 20, but this time we're getting even greater gain now. So, uh, 12 metres above the ground, we've got a peak gain of 8.1 dB, compared to 6.6, so 10 metres above the ground. But again, nice gain, some nice lobes developing there. And uh, yeah, very nice indeed. 12 metres, uh, similar to 17 in a way, but a bit, of a, a bit more of a break up of the pattern now. But look at that, uh, that, uh, ang that peak gain, a uh, lobe of peak gain, uh, 12 metres above the ground, nearly 10 dB now there. Very nice indeed. And again, some nice gain coming off those, off those little uh, lobes there. And finally, 10 metres uh, is looking an absolutely uh, very nice band for this antenna. Bit of a pattern breaker, but look at all those uh, all those bits of gain coming off there. And again, in that bottom corner of 12 metres above the ground, we're about 1.5 dB better at nearly 10 dB of gain. So really, um, the software seems to bear out what Rick says. And Rick has tried, this is DJ Zero IP, Rick, the one who came up with this design on, online, has used this antenna extensively himself in contests in the past and uh, swears by it. And you can see how it uh, works so well according to MMANA. Let's have a look now at the feed line loss. Not that there's much on uh, 15 meters of 450 ohm ladder line then. Let's take a look. And as we can see, I mean, throughout all these bands, there's nothing. Uh, the most we've got is 0.4 of a dB on 40 meters. Uh, but look, nothing there at all. So if you could run that sort of length of 450 ohm to the tuner, we're absolutely fine. And that length of 50 meters or 50 feet was specified by Tom because he reckons that's kind of the length of 450 ohm he's going to need to get it into his tuner, into the shack at the new place. But I mean, to be honest, if you run another, if you double that length, um, you know, the, the, the losses are going to be quite minimal. So um, absolutely fine running 450 ohm, isn't it? A great way to minimise losses. Now, the one band we haven't looked at yet is 160 metres, top band. Um, now, we're running a full wave loop on 80 metres, and this is where we probably are pushing the envelope too much. Let's have a look, though, at 160 now, if you look at the far field plot, it tells you that basically the antenna itself is, uh, well, what's the difference with 40 and 80? A bit less gain, but it looks very similar, doesn't it? Don't forget, it's very low to the ground now, isn't it? Even at 10 or 12 metres above the ground. And we can see there's not much difference there in terms of their performance. And they have decent gain at high angles. However, if we look at this, <laughs> looking at that table, the far right-hand column, we've got very high SWR. Um, at uh, at both heights, uh, we're, we're knocking on the door of six thousand to one, and the reactance is uh, is huge. Um, <clears throat> I mean, even if we uh, even if we shoved a really nice 
juicy four to one ballon at the end of the uh, the ladder line and uh, tried to bring all that in, into play a little bit more. I don't think it's going to do much good. Um, at the end of the day, I think this is going to be a step too far. I think even the biggest of boat anchor tuners are going to struggle to bring this into 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 two. They might do, but of course, even if you did, if we then look at the losses on the feed line, even with 450 ohm and only with about 50 feet or 15 meters of run, as we can see, look, even using 450 ohm, if we try to bring in 160 meters on an 80 meter loop, we can see that uh, effectively at either height, there's little difference. We're looking at around six and a half dB of loss. Um, you can say it's only an S point, but let's be fair, we're not going to have a very wet, very good performing antenna. You could probably get a signal out. Um, but an awful lot of your uh awful lot of your power will be turned into heat here. So uh, not a fantastic antenna on 160 meters. So we're pushing the envelope too much, I think, by trying to put it onto 160 meters, perhaps. But uh, overall, a pretty decent antenna, isn't it? With some really nice gain on those higher bands, especially above 20 meters. So in conclusion then. Is this a good antenna? Is what Rick is saying about it sort of tying up with what's on MMA and A? Well, it certainly seems to be, doesn't it? So in conclusion then, um, for 80 and 40 meters, an excellent antenna for short range contacts, very nice gain at high angles. It's okay on 20, it's a good antenna. Uh, starts to really shine over from 17 up to 10 meters at five degrees off the horizon. Uh, if you get uh, the signal out in the right direction, you can work some serious DX with this antenna, I'm sure. Being a loop is a good chance it'll be quieter and provide a better signal to noise ratio than a dipole, an end fed or a quarter wave vertical. Loops tend to be quieter. So uh, it'd be a nice antenna in a nice quiet location. Uh, you should get uh, much, hopefully, lower noise floor on say 40 and 80 uh, in, you know, in particular. And then finally, as a full wave on 80, it's a big challenge. I think that's probably a, an understatement to tune and get a, a big signal out on 160 meters. So there we go, uh, a really nice antenna. And my big thanks to Rick for putting this design up on the internet and for my friend Tom in letting me know about it. And it's been a pleasure to model it. And uh, not that I'm jealous, of course, but I'm sure Tom will have a lot of fun with this antenna with his new QTH when he, when he moves there. And uh, he's even promised to send me a few um, snippets of QSOs he'll make with it as well, just to really rub the salt in. So thank you, Tom. 73, thanks for watching. I hope you're keeping well. Stay safe. And uh, I'm, there's another video coming up. Just click up on there if you want to watch that too. Please subscribe as well. It'd be lovely to have you on board. 73 and all the best to you. Bye-bye.